Hello there, let's talk about creating a frozen lake material. So as you can see, there's a depth in the material. There are lots of details, lots of um, reflections, lots of normals, a lot of specular. I mean, lots of details you can see around here in the shader itself. It's just a shader. It's a, um, as you can see, it's a cube with a material on it. It's just a uh, material instance that if you go into the material there's something like this let's explain it okay so if to create a material we have to just right click create a material name it something I've already created it so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, explain the material in the video on this material that I've already created so the material is just a default lit material it's not as bad it's only 266 instructions it's like a very very normal costly material it's not bad at all uh, and the textures I'm using it's just the T on the line perlin on the line noise um, comes from the story content this one's the same and this one is I mean all the textures come from the sorry content so you shouldn't really worry about anything in here so let's create the material together um so let's go ahead and create well let's find this texture it's called t perlin noise let's drag it into the scene um and then we need to start from here texture coordinate multiply by something this is for uh, future references because we need to change the UVs for all the textures in here because you know there are a lot of different meshes or probably your legs different than mine then you need to change the size of the of the material of the whole textures in the scene so texture coordinate M uh, hold S for a parameter in it, it should be default one and then then for this one just add and then it goes in straight into the texture. Okay, so what else? Um we need this texture here. This is called metal gold N. Let's drag it into the scene. Um, we need to use our texture coordinate for all the textures we want to be using. And this is just a piece of code that you can use. Uh, it's a camera vector world position and then we need to transform the world world space to a tangent space we're going to work in the tangent space transform vector so transform uh, its default is tangent space to world space we need it to be world space to tangent space then custom reflection vector um and this will be the camera vector our normal though will be this one okay and then we need to mask it out for rng component mask rng is fine well what else so this is like the last part um okay we need to multiply it by this part Mo multiply i'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste it Control c Control v Control v i'm sorry uh mask is just type mask component mask and then uh uncheck rng and check b it's gonna be here this one is absolute just type in abs and got it there uh then it's going to be divided by this part 
you can go ahead and um, use a scalar parameter for this one this is just a float value like this one right here will be the depth of the material so you can see the depth here this one will be the depth if you want it to be uniform you can um, you can use a value like a hundred 500 or anything but in our case we are going to be using this this texture so a hundred will be a uniform color we don't want that we want some extra detail so this one is this one's just a fairly noise we have here so we can just copy and paste this one here and then we are going to get R and multiply it by hold S and um, ice depth this is the ice depth and let's default it to 50 and this one goes in here okay so we've created this um, we are here at the multiply so this is just a value for the texture size so let's copy and paste that one too it's just a multiply then divide divide this one here then a value of one hold one on your keyboard and then give it a value of one and for this one give it a value of 512 and then this one will go here to the add like this um okay so now that we have the texture everything's pretty much ready so if we start previewing you kind of have something that looks nice right it's not bad at all you can even give it a more depth like a hundred get that but there's a threshold for it there's a line between um, where it works and where it just breaks so try to not give it a really really high number maybe a hundred is like the threshold but I'm gonna go use 50 for now okay looks good for now okay so we could just easily um, hook this one into the base color but I don't really like the fact that these are too black so I just want to add a little bit of a float to it so make it less black I mean you could go ahead with this one doesn't matter but it's just me and then multiply it by a color so you could have a little bit of control for the color of it as well I mean it's just a demonstration you definitely water well, is not a lake is not like this but anyway um, let's actually get rid of this one why not okay so looks not bad um this one goes to the base color so let's base color straightly to the base color get that base color and for the roughness what i ended up doing was to add a minus 0.4 so add a minus 0.4 this one goes straightly to roughness and we are going to be using a normal map as well this one this one right here doesn't um, so if you if you watch closely the textures being uh, the UV that's going into the texture makes the texture to be seen like this we want a normal and it's already got some normal on it right but this is just all an illusion um, but what we want is we want a normal map on the surface not inside it not in the 
in the lake just on the surface so we don't really use the UV that's coming into this one instead we have to use this one right here the one that we've created for all the textures that we're going to use for this texture though we are going to be using T uh, rock slate and drag it into the scene and you can just go ahead and hook this one in doesn't matter but what I ended up doing was to I felt like it's kind of big a little bit so I just multiplied it by some value just in case um, and I really felt like that let me stop previewing this one I felt like this one's a little bit probably it's a bit too much to have something like this on the surface let me show you this one this is like a little bit too much because you know if you have all these normal maps on the surface you'll kind of lose the details inside so I wanted to actually have both uh, surface is important the depth is also important so I used a node called flatten normal it's just a material function that lerps a completely flat normal between the normal you have um, and then the normal intensity which for me would be not the normal intensity the flatten intensity flatten intensity Point four would be, I guess, good idea. Yeah, you also have the surface normals and the depth, which is kind of nice. So you have some probably cracks. I mean, you could use a better normal. That's for sure. It's just a this normal is uh, supposed to be used for rock. You could go ahead in Substance Designer or Photoshop and create your own normal map. Um, and yeah, probably we could just copy these two and have it here. And this is our normal. And that's it. This is the whole code we've created together. Let's look at it again. If you want to check everything out to see if everything's correct on your side. Um, Yep, that's it. Um, this is the lake we've created together and I hope you enjoyed this and it is helpful to you. If it was helpful, please hit that like button. Cheers.